In this session, I am talking about the objectives of English language education. Nowadays, English has a special and predominant role in the communicative sphere of the world. It has also special identity in the field of education. A language is a medium of communication and interacting verbally into our day-to-day -day life situations in family and society. But in India, English is a foreign language. It is different from mother tongue. The teaching of English is highly desirable for an English teacher. Before starting his teaching, it requires for the teacher to fix up his aims and objectives. It makes him efficient. The aims and objectives of teaching English is varied according to the streams. They are teaching because secondary students need is too different than higher secondary student. Aims and objectives of teaching English at secondary level. The following are the main objectives of teaching English at secondary level to develop knowledge and understanding of grammar, to develop abilities to make use the grammar in writing English, to understand the meaning of English passage, to develop interest in reading English passage and literatures, to develop self-study habit, to enhance competencies in writing essays and the gist of passage in their own words to develop their insight and favorable attitude towards English language, to develop the understanding about rules of grammar and their use in Eng writing English language. Okay, now we can see aims and objectives of teaching English at higher secondary level. Uh, it motivates students for more studying English language, to encourage for composing poems and writing essays, to develop the ability for grasping the theme of poem or English passage, to encourage students for writing the meaning or theme of the poem or passage in their own words, to develop the ability of appreciation of ideas and criticizing the thinking, to develop the creativity of the students related to verbal ability and reasoning or fluency of language, to develop the ability of understanding of the other school subjects, to develop the mastery of language for expressing his ideas, feelings and experiences to develop the ability of evaluation and analysis of language components, to develop the values, moral and character of the students. Okay, these are the aims and objectives of the uh, of English teaching at higher secondary level. When we speak generally, the objectives of teaching English has two main aspects, language aspect and literature aspect. Language aspect includes words, sentences, pronunciation, spelling and grammar. Literature aspects includes words, sentences expressing the ideas, feelings and experiences. The English language teaching has four objectives to develop uh, four skills. Reading, writing, speaking and listening. The English teaching also has two another objective, skill objectives and cognitive objectives. Okay, cognitive objectives include to acquire knowledge, to diagnose the weakness of speaking and writing English, to compare, the, compare and illustrate linguistic components, to classify the elements of English language, to understand the meaning of prose, poetry, story, uh, drama by reading. In order to teach English correctly and properly, English teacher must know the aims and objectives of teaching English. The aims of education are not achieved through the study of a subject, a subject or two, or in a day or a month. Education is a lifelong process and it includes the entire spectrum of subject taught in educational institutions through formal as well as non-formal education. The study of all subjects contribute to the achievement of aims and education. Uh, and therefore, in any scheme of teaching a subject, its aims and objectives are of prime concern. The teacher must know the aims of teaching a particular subject and to do full justice to is, it, is his, it is his responsibility. The teacher who does not know the aims of teaching his subject does not what he is doing, does not know what he is doing and also does not realize why he is doing or the purpose of doing it. And hence the knowledge of the aims of teaching a subject is a paramount importance 
for the teacher. He must know what he is trying to achieve, decide whether the procedure that he follows in the classroom or the method that he adopts and the devices that he resorts to are proper or, uh, or not. The aim should usually be decided upon when beginning to prepare a lesson. Now you can watch a video about aims and objectives of English teaching. Welcome to EPG Part Shala. I am Dr. Neeru Tandon from Department of English, VSSG College, Kanpur. We are dealing with the paper English Language Teaching. The basic thing regarding English language is that it has been regarded as the second language, not only in India, but in many other countries as well. The importance of English as a second language has been established, but why, how and various other questions are related with it. Let us discuss these questions in this particular module. The fundamental principles of language acquisition do not change with the language. However, the political economy of English in India is quite a different matter. The teaching of English therefore has to be planned far more carefully. It is on the one hand the language of opportunity, social status and increasing social elasticity and on the other hand in glove with the development that constantly expand the distance between the elite and the ostracized. We therefore need to guarantee that children achieve a respectable level of competence in English without misplacing their mother tongue. English as stated by Timothy J. Scares, I quote, English is not only important in getting a better job, it is everywhere in social interaction. If you can't speak it, then you are nobody, unquote. Now, before taking or getting it established as a second language, many people they ask me which language should be termed as the second language and why. A person's second language is a language that is not the mother tongue of that particular person, but that is used in the area of that person in contrast, a foreign language is a language that is learned consciously in an area where that language is not generally spoken. That is the particular difference between a second language and a foreign language. Now we have three things. One is your mother tongue, second is the second language and third is the foreign language. Previously, uh, maybe in the pre-independence time, English was considered as a foreign language. But today, you can go to any school, when you fill the form for your child, you find there are another category of the foreign language column where you will never find English. You will find, you may find German, Spanish, French, and that language is available for students to learn, but in the category of foreign language. Because that is not the language of the area. That is not the language widely spoken in the country. Of course, not for general use. But English has got a prominent place and we just use it liberally. Most of the people who are not properly educated in this particular language, they also, you can say that they are the receptive bilinguals that way, that they can at least understand it. 
So that's why it is quite justified to label English as the second language at least for Indians. Now Bloom's taxonomy you can see in this particular figure that what is the required learning style. There are various stages like creating, then evaluating, then analyzing, applying, understanding and remembering. So reading, listening, speaking and writing they are on one hand and when at the time of analyzing there comes the role of reading and writing. And then remembering and understanding you need proper vocabulary, grammar and vocabulary both without understanding it. The last two stages of course applying and understanding is not easy. Now there is a planned sequence for learning English as second language. Like alphabets that is the first more important thing. Then vocabulary. Simple vocabulary you can start with including meaning in vernacular that is by using grammar translation method or at least understanding in connection with English in Hindi or your mother tongue sorry. Then particularly when you understand those words you understand the application of those words then there comes the role of grammar. After understanding how to construct a sentence with a particular grammar. Like when you say in Hindi, main ek patra likhta hoon. What is the order? Main is the subject, patra is the object and likhta hoon is the verb. So subject plus object plus verb. The same sentence when you speak in English, I write a letter. So the subject and then verb and then the object. So that is the difference between the construction of sentence in various other languages as well. So one ha will have to understand though I know all the words if I say I let her write then what will happen? The sense will not be conveyed. So this way it is important to understand the grammar, the sentence construction and so that the communication should be proper in whatever language we are speaking. Then listening to conversation in English and try to understand that particular language is important. At this stage you may be called the receptive bilingual. Then after listening and understanding then you read text and read text only in English and understanding without the help of the mother tongue, without the help of the translation. Reading a text first in the vernacular and then translate it in English. When you do that, this translation process, if you do that, then what happens? That your understanding of sentences, construction and the placing of the words in a proper language, that just becomes clear. But if you do not require it, then you can pretty easily leave this step and move ahead. That is speaking, speaking in English. You start speaking, maybe your language is not absolutely correct, maybe not grammatically correct. That is again a matter of debate in ELT that whether grammar should be taught while teaching English or not. Most of the people, they are of the view that grammar should not be taught. Why? The reason they give that this language should be taught the way we teach mother language, mother tongue. Anybody who starts speaking mother tongue is not aware of the grammar. So if one can learn without learning the grammar that is the mother tongue, why can't he learn English as a language? a second language without learning the uh, nuances of the language that is the grammar portion. But some are of the view that being a second language it becomes easy for you if you understand at least the grammar and the other things related with the language. Then when you start speaking and correlating things then there come the stage when you are in the position to analyze. 
analysis comes and then finally it comes that you are biliterate and you can write in English. So these are the various stages and we all have established and accepted English as a window to the world. It is the language of science and technology. It is a language of reason and understanding. It is the language to import facts, materials and research from other countries as well. Now when we say teaching of English as a second language in India, we can just go to the history of TESL. What is that? That in the pre-independent India, what was the situation? Since the days of the British Raj, English remained the language of domination, status and privilege in India. The hegemonic colonial project in India was to create and maintain a class of administrative officers, clerks and compliant civil servants to carry out the task of ruling the vast and expansive subcontinent. Unquote. It was written by Timothy and most of the people they do agree with this particular view. Macaulay's motives in spreading Teaching of English in India were just to create a group of Indians who would be the interpreters between the rulers and the ruled. He wanted a different segment, a particular segment of Indians who are well versed in English so that they can understand and make their people understand the points. An official resolution endorsing Macaulay's policy of modern education through English medium was passed. But the teaching of English in systematic way started from the declaration of Wood's dispatch of 1854, which has been called the Magna Carta of Indian education. In Wood's dispatch, it was declared, I quote, the English language is to be the medium of instruction in the higher branches and the vernacular in the lower. English is to be taught where there is demand for it but it is not to be substituted for the vernacular languages of the country." Unquote. It was something that they also wanted that unrest should not be there as far as the matter of language is concerned. They didn't want to replace English with the vernaculars. So vernaculars should remain at their own places and English by and by should take a prominent place in the country with the lo local people. That was the aim. Now English today is studied because of the commercial and so-called political values. Our boys and girls think that without English they cannot get government services. Girls are taught English as a passport to marry. This was said by Gandhiji. But at the same time, Gandhiji also appreciated the importance of a foreign language. At that time, English was considered as a foreign language. And he said, I quote, I would have our young men and women with literary taste to learn as much of English and other world languages as they like and expect them to give the benefits of their learning to India and to the world, unquote. So, situation changed in the post-independent India. The foreign language status of English in India appeared to have remained for a shorter period initially and gradually seems to have acquired the status of a second language. Professor V. V. Yardi gives clear distinction between a foreign and a second language status of English as far as India is concerned. He said, I quote, English as a foreign language refers to a situation where it is taught for certain specific purposes which reading scientific works, translation, communication at certain levels and for certain purpose only. English as a second language refers to a situation where English is used widely for purposes of administration, education and as a common link language." Unquote. Professor Yadi further asserts, in India until recently English was a second language. It is now in the process of acquiring the status of a compulsory third language. Now observing the rapid change in the place of English in post-independent India, scarce remarked, I quote, 
English is recognized as an important global or international language, essential for professional employment and significantly a key component of the cultural capital of middle class Indians." Unquote. Agrawal points out the status of English in the post-independence period as link language among the educated people and the few elites. In spite of the introduction of the Hindi as the official language, English is still played an important role. But in this way, it did not bring about any significant change in the status of English on the contrary. It resulted in the creation of a class of vernacular educated native to occupy lower position both in education and administration. So they made it clear that whosoever has adopted English as the second language are just doing well in their professional field. People need English as a language of development, as a language in which they can understand the world in their own way. Everything is not available in the vernacular languages of India. Neither Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Punjabi, you won't find the scientific books, the researches and the various important documents of the world in that particular language. So if there is a scientist in which language he can just understand the world, in which language a person can just have a link with the world and share his knowledge and just have the benefit of going abroad or just having that development for himself and for the country. Of course, it is English. English in India is what it is because of its functions which are controlled by its socio-cultural setting and by its interaction with the major Indian languages. This approach of, to English in India is designed to show how the lexico-grammatical system of a language gets shaped and reshaped by its functions. There is therefore no feel that English in India is or will be less effective or less efficient as a system of communication. But there is every reason to say that it has and will continue to have a marked Indian flavor. Now you see that in 1956, Central Advisory Board on Education proposed this three language formula. This idea was adopted at the Chief Minister's Conference in 1961 with a modification where Hindi plus Sanskrit were considered as two major languages and both of them were leading towards English accepting as English as the third language. This was known as the three language formula and it was accepted as well. Now what happened? It's a very interesting thing that we have adopted English as Indians as the second language or maybe constitutionally as a third language. But once you have adopted it, the changes started pouring in. What are the changes? The Indianization of English. We have started molding. We have not taken either the British pattern of English or the Americanized pattern of English. Rather, it is the Indianized version of English that is more heartily and readily accepted by Indians. The reason is there in front of us, a bulk of literature known as Indian writing in English has been accepted as a branch of English literature in India. Not only in India, in various other countries, the literature written by Indians in English has been taken well. So we all know about varieties of English. Indian English is one such accepted variety. The Indianization of English involves adaptations of existing features of British English and the use of transferred mother tongue items where British English is deficient. It is a linguistic variety with its own grammatical, lexical and phonological norms. It has developed its own varietal characteristics 
through the interaction of Indian languages and social behaviors with those of English. Let us think about grammar portion. Under the influence of traditional Hindi grammar, speakers often use progressive tenses in a statement such as I am believing you instead of I believe you or she is liking music. She likes music. They are two simple expressions but more often you find the difference because the effect it has due to the Hindi language. The change can be seen in the use of articles. It is known as zero article. Most of the times the definite and the indefinite articles a, an and the they are often omitted. Zero past tense marker like verbs are left unmarked for tense although other signals like adverb of time such as yesterday, last week etc. often give linguistic clues about the timing of an event. Declarative word order in interrogative construction that is the normal subject plus verb word order is retained in statements using the question words like who, what, when, where, why, how etc. One example in various other matters you can easily find that there are changes in English like whose has been replaced by who whose work it is instead of who work, who is taking place of whose because whose rather represents the Hindi translation but is still the person who learn English through grammar translation method they still continue with this particular kind of English. Most of the times what happens when you just take this grammar translation method the sense that you want to convey can be misplaced. It's a funny thing when you when we say my head is eating circles, Mujhe chakkar, mera sar chakkar kha raha hai. So that is something that grammar translation method alone is not sufficient to give the feel of the language in particular. Because in English, we have different terminology, we have different vocabulary and different use of vocabulary to express a particular sense. Plural uncount nouns like litters, luggages, furnitures, woods that can also be found in the use of English by Indians because they are used to have these things in plural as far as Hindi is concerned. One more very important thing like road, they use the word road but what will they say Ro when they speak in Hindi then also they will say Rode bahut kharaab hain. Now what is this Rode? Buke rakhi hui hain. What is this? This is that they are using the word book, they are using the word road because they have accepted them as part of their own language and they are using those words in the Hindi the way they use Hindi. So somewhere this intermingling mixture of Hindi and English that is to be noticed. And English is also Indianized where Hindi words have been taken, accepted even in the dictionary. You will find many Hindi words over there in the dictionary as a part of English dictionary. Now lexics, code switching that is something very very common. The occasional or even frequent use of a Hindi like Urdu, Punjabi, Gujarati etc included word or expression within an English sentence can communicate a great sense of shared identity or solidarity with other speakers. If a person is speaking in English with a Muslim, even then he will say Salaam Walaikum Janab and then he will start speaking. He is not going to use the vernacular language but even then to give the feel of this particular closeness, he feels that this kind of greeting is very very important. 
extensive compound information like english speaking classes cousin brother cousin sister chalk piece key bunch meeting notice pin drop silence time pass all these things you can very easily find and people don't even notice it otherwise shortening of words is also a part of indianization of english he is very enthu for particular things now what is this enthu this is a short verb word for enthusiastic or enthusiasm or there are various fundas that he uses that is fundamentals he knows the fundas very well what is this fundas this is the indianization of the word fundamental acronyms indians are very uh, just comfortable with use of acronyms like his mcp is used for male chauvinist pig foc free of charge mpk that is a very popular thing came from movies maine pyar kiya i l u i love you from a song that is pronounced at elu elu so a b c d again the same thing that is most of the things we learn from film and the songs also so american born confused desi that is used for that particular and they say a b c d so these are the various things just to show that indians have accepted english as a second language and they are making changes not only in their own languages using english over there but also in english infusing their own vernacular words in those if i say any one today that just speak for 20 minutes without using any english word in your vernacular language it is readily not possible for a common man because most of the words are such that they even don't know that they belong to english indian english pronunciation is a relatively close approximation to the written form generalizations in terms of sound and clipping of the vowel sound and non distinction between long and short vowel sounds are prominent in indian english non articulation of vowel sounds is another feature of indian english now usage what's your good name dear sir with reference to your above see my below particular so and so this is the popular opening line in the official letters Pritam Singh has left for his heavenly abode that will be the death notice a kind very prevalent she freaked out last night she had a good time kindly please advise me to show that i am more polite thank you g dr sahab this g shows the element that they cannot delete from their system how can we address someone without addressing g no so it becomes thank you ji dr sahab namaste how are you mingling will you take tea because hum chai lete hain peete hain to give a test not to test so these are various examples indian mainstream situation is not much different In most of the schools in India the old traditional method of teaching grammar of English is being followed. The teaching of vocab spelling and structures through parroting and cramming methods are practiced. Emphasis is on receptive and productive skills that too through bad pedagogy. Now what is the status of TESL teaching of English as the second language? reluctance to communicate in english both by student and teacher other than necessary teacher till he or she is teaching takes this but the moment he is out of the class what he speaks is the language of the particular region lack of confidence among students due to lack of exposure and usage is easily found lack of reading habits english is studied as a subject 
rarely it is studied as a particular language to be adopted bad textbook based pedagogy absence of teachers capacity building opportunities are also there now the status of english if we say in one word that is it has taken place as the official language of india for work purpose you just cannot avoid english english is widely spoken and understood in all urban centers of india it has a special national status in india it has a special place in the education system journalism parliament broadcasting and even in judiciary in india more number of newspapers magazines books are published in english than in hindi or in any other vernacular language official language of india is hindi but english is more prominent statistics show that india is the third largest producer in word for books in english there is a growing number of indians who write in proper and reasonably good english multi skill approach that is lack of fixed methodology language is being teach taught and people accept it people read it but there is no such one fixed methodology for teaching and learning english language teachers they had already found grammar translation method inadequate and rejected it other than in some rural area and ineffective they find that it is ineffective in developing communicative abilities in learners because the process is very very slow while using grammar translation method the direct method utilizes l2 employing visual aids and role playing extensively and encourages students to use an inducive approach to discover the rules of the target language the elt exponents and practitioners they believed in the natural method and asserted that a foreign language can be taught without the translation or use of the mother tongue and when english the exposure is so much that it has been taken as a second language so there is no use that the mother tongue must be used as the grammar translation method i will like to mention the report of the education commission which was held in 1964 to 66 it was there it reported i quote in higher education english will be as a library language and it should be taught from standard 5th though we know that for many students who come from the rural areas can't begin their study before class 7th now what they wanted to say that english as a library language why is english as a library language because most of the books of for higher education for research purpose that you can get in english easily and not in the vernacular language if you can get them in translation maybe the feel maybe that particular uh, facts are not transported in the way they are supposed to be so the aims and objectives of teaching english in india remains the same the objective of teaching should not be producing bookworms or linguistic robots what is important is to motivate the students by creating awareness amongst them regarding the importance of english and then gradually helping the students to attain his goal the basic objective should thus be to make the student independent as far as the language is concerned the aim of teaching english in india is to help students to acquire practical command over english in other words it means that a student should be able to understand and speak english read and write english and enjoy the literature and the other books written in english on their own we also feel the need to enable the learners to speak english correctly it means that producing sounds with the proper stress and proper intonation that is the rising and the falling sounds to enable the students to read english and comprehend and interpret the text the major text that is written only in english you cannot 
enjoy Keats or Shelley translated in English or in any vernacular language. To uh, enjoy Hardy, to enjoy Shakespeare, you must know the particular language. To enable the students to write English correctly and meaningfully, for example, writing letters, application, description and accounts of day-to-day -day events, they must get hold of the language. We feel the need to enable the learners to acquire knowledge of the elements of English, to enable the learners to develop interest in English and to increase the students' ability to use planning, drafting and editing to improve their work in English. People are aware now of the importance of English. They are interested in learning the spoken part because of the social image. As a result, various courses are developed for teaching spoken English. The use of language laboratory and computer assisted language learning that is popularly known as CALL has created new changes in the teaching of English. Along with call and mall, that is mobile learning, the audio cassette CDs are being used on a large scale to learn the spoken language. Various softwares are there and people in general, they love and they try to gather the capacity for the spoken skills in particular. Now television channels are also helping us in this particular thing, like various channels are there Various programs are there like NDTV Imagine is running a program Angrezi mein kehte hain. All of them cannot be termed as cheap. Dr. Deepti Gupta rightly says, The irony of situation is that while academicians label these learning centers, shops or commercial institutes, it is these establishments that are a major influence behind the changing face of the ELT paradigm in India. Unquote. To sum up, we can say that the position of teaching of English in India as a second language is not a new phenomena. Rather, it is developing, it is accepted, it is just being welcomed by one and all. It became one of the official language of the nation and continues to enjoy the patronage of the Indian people. Not only the elite class, but the common class also warned that their students, their children as students should go to English schools so that they are also in the position to interact with the elite class in the proper way. So they have undergone significant changes locally to carry much of the communicative burden of the Indian society. So keep learning. Thank you for visiting EPG Patshala. As we conclude the topic, the objectives of teaching English in India, it is the desired outcome at which instruction is aimed. Hence, objective is broadly classified into two, product objective and process objective. The general objective of teaching English at the secondary level are students must be able to do the, them well at the end of their secondary education. They understand English when spoken at a, a reasonable speed and they must have an ability to speak English not only with accurate pronunciation but also with the correct grammar.